Paulette Morrissey from Tulip Square. Um, today we're going to be working on one of our pattern projects. I'm going to be making the Quilt As You Go oven mitts. This is kind of one of our older patterns and I thought it might be a good idea to remake it, update the pattern a little bit, and also show people step by step how to make the oven mitts. They're awfully quick and easy and Quilt As You Go is a nice technique everybody should try at least once. So I'm going to pick out some fabric and I'm going to cut all the necessary pieces that it shows in the pattern and then we're going to head over to the sewing machine and we're going to get started. So if you want to follow along with me and make your own oven mitts, it's pattern number 506. So I will see you over at the sewing machine. All right, I've got everything set up here. I've got, this is the fat quarter collection that I'm using and I've only got like little remnants left of each piece because I've used it on a lot of patterns and I like it, but I've got enough to make a couple more small items. This is one piece I'm using for the backing and then I've got a couple layers of batting underneath. Uh, I recommend that if you're using for pot holders and oven mitts that one of your layers is Thinsulate or one of those insulated battings just because it makes it a lot more safe when you're using them for on hot items. This is the pattern we're going to be using and there's a link for it in the description below if you need to follow along and make your own oven mitts. It's pattern number 506, Quilt As You Go Oven Mitts, and there's also a couple pot holders in the pattern. So I've got my backing, my batting. And I've cut a bunch of strips according to the pattern. Now the pattern calls for three different colors for the strips, but that's not necessarily necessary. I'm just using a bunch of different colors because I don't have a lot of any one color left. And with Quilt As You Go, you can use two colors, four colors, six colors, whatever you want. So this is what I'm going to use, and this is going to be the backing. So let's get started and sew some. All right. I've turned my piece over. This was the backing, and the backing is set down right side down because that'll be your lining or your back of your pot holders. So you take your first strip and you're just going to sew it down along the outside edge using a, a nice quarter inch seam. I recommend using a walking foot if you've got it because it keeps the, the strips from working their way down. If you don't have a walking foot, then you're going to have to alternate which end you sew from. But I'm going to use the walking foot. And you just start by sewing the first strip down. The first strip is the only one you're sewing down with it laying here right side up. The rest will all be sewn facing down. And when you get to the end, you have to stop. Got the thread. And then you bring it back up to this end and you're going to put your next strip down. When you put your second strip down, make sure it's face down directly on top of the first strip. You're going to sew along the left edge of both and you're going to put the, all subsequent strips will also be face down. And then you're going to sew a quarter inch seam down the length of those two. That's connecting the first strip to the second strip and of course they're all getting connected to the backing and the batting. So I'm going to sew the second strip, also a quarter inch seam. At the end, you do the same thing. Come to the end, put it up from the sewing machine, and cut this thread. Then, if you look at this now, when you fold this second piece over, you basically have quilted the first piece. And that's how simple quilt as you go is. You take your third piece, Lay it along the left edge of the second piece and we will sew this seam here along the left edge, quarter inch seam. All right, and if you don't happen to have a walking foot or you don't want to use it, then the better way to sew these is to sew like I just did all these starting at that far end. And if you don't have a walking foot, it's better to alternate. So then I would take this piece and swing it around and I would sew this row from this end. And then the process is the same where you get to the end, you cut off the thread and you can see that this still looks exactly the same. And then you would swing it back around and do the next row this way. It's just that if you alternate the, stitch, the, the strips this way, they won't tend to kind of like walk their way down, otherwise they're going to end up kind of like along here and there. So 
If you don't have a walking foot, I recommend you alternate sides. So what I'm gonna do is go across this and sew the whole strip so until I run out of, of batting, and then we will we will cut the pieces and we'll get started putting them together. I'm just about done. I'm gonna put the last row on, but I just wanted to mention one thing. When you put your each strip on, make sure that you've pushed the previous strip down nicely so it's away from the previous seam, so it's not you know bunched up and you end up with a little bump there or anything. So make sure that that's smooth all the way down. And then we will put this last row on. And then after you've sewn your last strip down and you run out of batting and backing, you'll want to just sew down this final edge. Okay, the purpose of sewing this end edge strip down is twofold. One, it keeps the, the final strip from flopping around when you turn it over and cut. And two, it gives you an edge so you know when you're tracing your pattern on the other side that that edge is as far as you can go. So there we go, we've got all, it's all, it's all quilted and it's ready to be cut apart into the pattern pieces. I've got all of the quilting done from edge to edge. And now I'm going to turn it over and we're gonna trace our pattern pieces on this side. So I have cut out all the pattern pieces and there's a couple pieces that you have to tape together along the dotted line if you're going to use those. And then you have to decide if you wanna do the oven mitt style, the mitten style oven mitt or the one with the thumb in the center. Now, if you're going to do the mitten style one, you would cut out one this way, and then you'd flip it over and cut out the other one this way. If you're doing the one with the center thumb, there's just three pieces and you cut out one of each. And you also get to decide if you want your stripes to go this way or this way. And I think I'm going to cut out this one right now, and I'm going to put the stripes this way. So these will all fit nicely like this, and then we will trace them. I like to just use a colored pencil. It's the easiest to, for me to use. Now make sure you stay within those edge seams because there's nothing under there besides batting. And on the sides, you can see all your little ends on the sides, so it's okay. So I just lay it down and I trace around it and you can pin it down if you want to. Otherwise, if you're just holding it, make sure you don't move it. I'm just gonna trace all the way around it. They make washable or water soluble colored pencils, which you could also use, and those lines would disappear, but they're not going to show anyway. But you just trace it down like that, trace all your pieces, and cut them out, and then we will come back and start sewing. So I'll go do that and I'll be right back. Okay, here's the pattern pieces all cut out for that oven mitt, and I also cut out one for the mitten style oven mitt because we'll be putting that together in the pattern too. And they've all got different backs because I made several of them. So this one goes together just by putting this here. This will go here. This will meet up for your thumb. And this will go here. And your hand goes in here. And that's your thumb piece. So that's how that goes. Now the next thing we have to do is get our binding prepared. So now you got to get your binding all prepared. I've got a nice jelly roll with a bunch of solids in all different shades of blues and turquoises so I thought I'd use a couple of those. So I've got these two picked out for these these um, oven mitts and I've got them folded in half and pressed and where there are seams where you need to to make the piece long enough it's sewn on the bias and then of course folded in half. So these are ready to go and we're going to start our assembly now. Okay we're first going to make the oven mitt with the center thumb. So we're going to start on the wrong side of these two pieces that are the bottoms and we're going to sew our short strips of binding to the lining side of each one. Use a nice quarter inch seam and sew those. So we'll do that right now. All right, I've got the 
binding sewn down onto the wrong side of each of these two pieces. And I'm just gonna fold it to the right side and stitch it down along this folded edge. Now we've got the bottoms of both edges done. I'm gonna trim off any little excess bat binding on the corners. We don't need that. I'm trim those off. Trim off all our threads. And we're ready to continue. Now we're going to take the binding and we're going to sew it around the thumb. And we're going to put both pieces together, the, the piece you just put one of the bindings on and this piece. And we're going to make sure they're lined up and if you need to, to pin them together that's, that's fine too or clip them together and make sure that these edges don't move. Like so. It's a, it's a little thick here because you got a lot of layers of batting. So you are going to have to sew fairly slow and I recommend kind of using a larger needle. I use a, a size 14 for this. So what you're going to do is start and sew here, sew around here, and then come straight off here. So we're going to start by just doing this short little seam right here, quarter inch seams. And keep all your edges together and go slow because it is thick. Go about a quarter of an inch past that corner so you can then pivot. And take the batting with you and kind of work it around that corner. Coming down to here and you're going to go to about a quarter of an inch past this, so right down to about here. All right. And then you turn and then you can turn this and it will reluctantly turn with you and you just sew across to that end. Now you fold the binding to the front of the mitt and stitch it down. It's easier to work around corners with, I mean curves. Sometimes I take a little tool and I push it down like this when you're coming around a curve. And I know they make all kinds of handy tools for this. And this is just one I've used for a long, long time and all it is is an old crochet hook that I ground the end off of one. And I'm going to come down to about here, just past that point, let me show you. It's going to come down to here. Bring it down to here, like so. And I'm going to turn. I'm going to let it go around this corner. And we got that piece done. Now we're going to sew these two pieces together, right sides out, so lining sides together. And this I recommend you either pin or clip, so I'm going to go ahead and clip all the edges and then we'll be right back. All right, I've got the whole thing clipped together, right sides out, the lining side is on the inside in here. And these are both right sides out and you're going to start on one side and we're just going to sew all the way around to the other side with the binding. So. We start, leave about a half an inch tail on this end, maybe closer to an inch, and fold it under, like so. Snug it up really good on both of those edges of the binding. Snug it up tight and start your seam right there. Now go slow because you've got a lot of layers here. as I go and just sew around carefully. Now the thickest part is when you're going to get to this little thumb end. 
And that's where you'll have a lot of layers to work through. So go really slowly, one stitch at a time, and it's only about maybe four or five stitches that it's going through the really thickest parts. Ease your machine over it. Both ends of the thumb piece should be pointing upwards, pointing towards the top, not, not folded down the other way. They should both be going upwards. Need about an inch on this end. When I get close to this end, I'm gonna take that and snugly tuck it up under, just like so. turn the thing over and you can see where you have folded those edges over now when we do this and you tuck that end in a little bit you've got a nice finished edge so that's what we're going to do now I'm going to sew down the opposite side start here back tack here but would be a good idea We've got that all sewn now, and it's now an open mitt. Nice handy little, nice and thick, nice and durable. And it's all set, and now we're going to make the mitten style oven mitt. All right, next we're going to work on the mitten style oven mitt. Starting on the wrong side, we're gonna take our two short strips of binding and sew them to the two ends using a nice good quarter inch seam. off and then we're going to fold them to the right side and sew them down again. Take that, fold it over, stitch it down on this right, side. We've got the binding sewn to the right side and now we're going to put these two pieces together right sides out and all you have to do on this one is sew all the way around with your binding. I like to pin this all together so I'm going to go ahead and do that first. All right, I've got this just clipped all the way around the edges, and all we have to do is just sew the binding on. So we start at one side, and make sure your two ends here are even with each other. Start with one side, leave about an extra inch, fold it over nice and snug, keep it nice and tight on the ends, and you start your seam right there. The nice quarter inch seam. Curve a little bit when you come to the, uh, the thumb. Like so. So then when we turn, and turn the fabric a little bit. This is where you kind of have to oops, get it in there nicely. still on your quarter inch seam. Fold the end over nice and snugly. And remember at the end, you do need to slow down because you're going through all these layers of, of binding along with your seam you're doing. that part's done. Okay, we got the binding sewn on the back side, or one side, I guess there's no right or wrong side here. 
this gets folded around to the other side and that little end gets tucked in and that gets tucked up and then I'm going to clip all the way around it's going to go around the whole thing like this and then we'll get back and we'll saw the top edge. all right this is all clipped down and just to show you another option for finishing on this side I'm going to hand stitch this down and show you how easy that can be to do. So I've got my needle and thread. I like to use a thread that matches the binding as much as possible. I'm going to take off the first clip and I'm going to bury the knot inside the binding here. And then you just take nice small stitches. Now you can do it one of two ways. You can have your stitches visible, like I'm gonna show you right on this binding. Stitches are visible, just straight little lines. Or you can go under here and come up and just grab a touch of the binding and then go back down right next to it and come up a quarter inch away or an eighth inch away like so, pull your thread nice and snug. I'm going to go back down in. And keep these stitches as small as possible. And make sure you're only going through the, the top layer. You shouldn't be hitting the other layer though. Like so. Just go through here. Come up like so. a couple more stitches but you can see this is pretty easy and it takes about maybe 10 or 15 minutes to do a whole oven mitt and this kind of eliminates the problem of when you're sewing the second edge of the binding down it's very hard to get it looking neat on the back you end up with it sometimes on here and sometimes on the binding and it doesn't look real attractive so sometimes it's better just to do hand stitching for something like this so I'm gonna go around and do this whole edge and then I'll come back and I'll show it to you what it looks like. All right, I finished hand sewing all the way around the edge. This oven mitt, you can see little bits of stitches, but it still looks a lot neater than sometimes what happens when you're sewing by machine and you never know exactly where that stitch is gonna end up. So this is all done. Get your nice big oven mitt, nice and thick. And Durable. Okay, now we're going to make a couple of pot holders, and I'm going to show you a couple of different ways we can do this. First of all, we can take the binding and leave a good end of it, and I'm only going to sew starting down at this end here. Sew a nice quarter inch seam, just maybe two or three inches from the corner. This edge is parallel with this edge. Hold it straight up. My favorite thing to do is take a little ruler or anything nice and straight and after you've made that 45 degree fold, line this up with the edge you just finished and lay this down right along here. Now when you pull this needle, this ruler out, you've got just enough of a little extra that you'll need to make a perfect mitered corner in. Sew this quarter inch seam all the way down to within a quarter inch of this corner. Make another mitered corner just like you did on the previous run. Now when you get to the fourth corner you do the same process of folding the binding over but when you sew this seam, only sew in maybe about an inch or so. I'm going to get these threads out of our way. For something small like a pot holder, it's probably just easiest to do a straight seam. It's pretty hard to get 
a mitered a mitered seam in this in this little bit of a space. So what I'm going to do is about in the middle of this opening. I'm going to cut this one this way and I'm going to cut the top one a half an inch overlap. So the overlap by a half an inch like so. You got the two pieces like so. And then if you notice that when you've got each one's got a half of an inch, when you put them together, that's a quarter inch seam. So what we do is we separate the two ends, the two layers of both ends of the binding. And we're going to sew them together once their seam is opened out. So put them with the peaks of their fold together like so. with the peaks like this and then I'm just going to fold the pot holder in half just to make it easier to do this. And then if you can get the seam started then you can adjust it as you go. So get the two edges together nicely and still do a quarter inch seam. Keep your needle down when you have to adjust it. more stitches adjust the binding a little bit you're going to finger press that little seam open just like so and then tuck it back in to where the original fold was and then that piece of binding should fit down just about perfect and then you finish that seam and that's all there is to that and then we're just going to flip it to the right side and stitch it down All the way around. Um, might as well show you on the corners. It's easiest on, on the corners. I'm just going to show you by clipping it, although it isn't absolutely necessary to clip it, but it'll be easier to show you how to get the nice mitered corner. I'm going to clip before and after a corner. And then I'm going to take this half. If you're sewing this way, this would be the second edge that you're going on. So you're going to tuck that edge in so it's parallel with this edge under here. And then this top piece will fold over. If you make it a nice 45 degree fold, it'll fold over into a perfect little mitered corner. And then you can put that on like so. Now that, that would work if you're sewing this way, starting this way and going around. If you're sewing this way, then you would put this edge down first, and then this edge. And then you would put, tuck this end in and bring this one over. Because whatever direction you're coming from, you want the top edge of that miter to be like this. You go this way and you got the top edge, so then you can leave it in the corner and pivot and go this way. Or if you're coming around this way, you'd come this way, pivot at that corner and continue on. It just makes for a much easier way to make a, a mitered corner. So I'm going to go ahead. I think I'm just gonna clip my corners around here and then I'll be back and I'll sew it up. All right, I've got it clipped all the way around and I'm just going to start sewing. I'll just start on one of these straight edges. And you just do a nice even seam close to this inside folded edge. And there is a finished quick and easy pot holder. Nice mitered corners on the front, and that also makes for nice mitered corners on the back. So that's one way to make a pot holder. Now we're going to show you another one just a second. Here's a little something you can do if you want to make a pot holder a slightly different way, and you don't even have to bother with binding. This isn't in the pattern, so it's just a little extra thing for on the video. Um, Cut your pot holders when you're cutting them out. Cut one a little bit bigger. This one is about seven and a half inches. And even though it's still got a backing and everything on it, I'm going to cut another piece, also seven and a half inches. And I'm going to put it right sides together with the, the finished side of my pot holder, not the back side of it, the right side. And I'm going to sew all the way around, but I'm going to leave an opening on one side so I can turn it to the right side. So I'm going to start down here. Do a quarter inch seam. Now I've gone all the way around, 
except for this little spot here that's open. I'm cutting the threads. And I'm just going to snip off those corners. I'm just going to turn the whole thing right side out. This is basically inside out pot holder. I'm turn it all the way around. Now this does add one extra layer to your pot holder, this backing piece, but it's never a bad thing to have an extra layer to a pot holder. And if you know in advance you're going to do this, your original backing piece behind the batting could just be muslin or some scrap fabric that you just want to get rid of because it's not going to show at all. Now, all I'm going to do is take that edge of that extra backing piece, and I'm going to tuck it under, and I'm just going to hit that with the iron, and then I'm going to do the same thing with the quilted edge. It's going to be tucked under, and if you don't want to iron this, you don't have to, but just kind of makes it a little bit easier to sew it. All right, so now we're going to sew all the way around the edge, close to the edge, like about an eighth of an inch from the edge, and you're going to be closing this opened edge while you go around. So I think we'll just start with this edge. So I'm going to start right here and just go close to the edge. Like I said, about a quarter of an inch away. We want to make sure we catch both of those raw edges in here. So make sure they're tucked in. You can stop there, or you can put another row in here, and I'm going to put another row about a half an inch away, and I'm just going to gauge it by how far I keep my presser foot from that previous seam. All right, that's all finished. You've got a pot holder with an extra extra layer, which never hurts on a pot holder. It's all finished, and you didn't even have to do any binding. All right, we're all done. We've ended up with a mitten-style oven mitt, and the thumb, center thumb style oven mitt, which I'm taking off to pick up pot holders, and two different ways to make pot holders. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please give us a like below and subscribe if you'd like to see some more videos, and remember that it's pattern number 506, quilt as you go oven mitts, if you would like to give it a try, it, the link is in the description below. And I hope you have a good day, happy sewing, and we'll see you again next time.